by our colleague Charles here because it's really the future and what we are heading for. So uh, I've been in this industry working with this uh, big company for more than 12 years and I have worked in some of the iconic hotels here in UAE. I've seen the challenges and, uh, we are facing in this industry. And since that time, we were thinking how we can achieve saving and how the saving can affect the, affect the, the asset during its life cycle from the design construction to the operation stage. Now, uh, this presentation will address the BIM and uh, the facility management during the construction and the operation later and how we can see this uh, up-to-date technology that helps in saving during these two stages. We should remember, and I do agree with the, uh, our colleague earlier, that the saving that can be achieved during the asset life cycle at the operation stage, it's the highest. Considering that all the, op all the owners, they focus at the design and construction stage to achieve the utmost saving, to do the value engineering, but we always forget that the most of the asset life cycle, it comes at the operation stage. More than 95 to uh, 85 to 90 percent of the asset life, it's at the operation stage. And in a hotel, we do achieve a lot of saving if we maintain our asset properly and we achieve an energy efficiency. So today we are going to go through BIM and facility management so since, since uh, this is what we can find that most useful for such type of assets. So everybody right now, it's, it's the market talk about BIM. What we are talking about here, it's information management during the asset life cycle from the visibility studies to the con design, construction, and later to the operation. This is the first time we were able to integrate all our information during the life cycle of our property from the design till operation. Earlier, we used to have thousands of drawings, specification, and so on. Now, everything is embedded within the intelligent objects, the buildable, constructible objects themselves. This is the technology. It evolves quickly and it's becoming more automated, more facilitated. As, as a designer, uh, the most important thing what we can see for the hotels that starts from the design. The first challenge which we see now, there are uh, hotel owners and there are operators. So there would be a design, later would be uh, uh, given to the operator to see that if that design fits to their requirement. So, Within them and this 3D technology, intelligent technology, we will be able to achieve more design visibility, conceptual design exploration, rather than changing the design while we are constructing. Then, environmental and energy analysis, design analysis by itself. Most of the projects which I've seen that, we will be doing the construction. During the construction, the operators come on board. When the operators come on board, they have their own standards. Sometimes that doesn't match the requirement. So changes start to appear. Now we need to have, let's say, a kind of scenario to avoid those changes and to have a better visibility of to address these changes. Within this technology, it's becoming easier. Even though we would recommend that at the beginning, all the project stakeholders should come all together at the same time, working collaboratively to achieve the constructability of this asset in a quick time. But if it is not happening, still we need to find a way to address these risks in a safer way. Detailed design and contract documentation. All of it is becoming right now in one single source of truth, the model itself. We should understand that sorry. OK. Oh, OK, I don't know what's happening here. So we should understand that there is a supply chain management here. It starts from the design to the operations, during, including the subcontractor services providers, and so on. So this life cycle itself, it should include a smooth information transition between each stage, which is not happening right now. At the project itself, we have a lot of milestones we have to achieve because it's very important for the hotel owner and operator to deliver the uh, property on time. If we don't have a smooth transition with the information between each stage, we will have bottlenecks. That will delay the handing over of the facility and the operation. 
One of the major problems we are still facing in our construction industry, the overlap between the engineering and construction. We should understand that the designer should deliver a, a, a well-designed facility. But with the requirement of the client, the owner, the operator, the design changes are happening almost every time on the asset itself during the design. And the owner wants to, to, to fly the, the, the tender requirement to start constructing this, to commit with the dates of uh, opening. So we will have, at that time, an overlap between the engineering work done by the consultants and the engineering work will shared by the contractor. This overlap should be eliminated by telling a proper contracts that allow smooth transition of information and liability on the design between each stages. It is at this stage, if we are able to control it properly, we should achieve at least 30% of the engineering cost and time over the project delivery. Because all these problems, if it is not addressed at the design stage, will be transferred later to the construction. During that time, the risks will become more. The owner and operator should know that we have budget to deliver the project with this amount of money in this time. We should commit to that. We should not exceed the budget. In all these types of projects, we always exceed the budgets because of the design changes, because of the hidden risks, and so on. So it's what we build uh, virtually is what we built actually. So we know exactly where we are heading for. 7D and 6D, we are talking about the facility management where we know exactly how to maintain and operate our facility. And we'll come into a bit of detail about it. And the environmental and energy impact of our facility to the uh, surrounding environment. Yes, we are looking for a saving right now, but we have to remember that we are living in a planet that our kids and grandkids will live there, so we need to have it, let's say, sustained till that time. We will just focus now into the 6D and 7D, which is more important to such uh, conferences now. The 7D, it's about the sustainable component of the building. Previously, as our colleagues earlier said, that it is difficult to understand exactly the behavior of the uh, property and because of the lack of doing proper and intensive calculation. Manually before it was difficult. But if you have a full asset in 3D with actual material and you know exactly the behavior of that building, you can automatically right now and easier to get more precise and actual figures that tell you exactly how your building should behave and how much energy will be consumed. So you know exactly how much design energy you are looking for and you have the design, let's say the energy analysis, and later you have sustainable element tracking. And it's also important that recently, even in, in lead requirement, they are trying to integrate this digital world into their chapter called environmental modeling, where you can just put your asset into its actual global positioning and you understand its behavior not only in a specific time. You can do the calculation all over the year duration and you know exactly how much energy you are going to consume. Facility management. As we said, it's a very developing world right now. Most of these assets will be living for the next 50 to 80 years. So as we said, the life cycle of the asset it, during its facility uh, it represents more than 80% of its life. So the saving which we are achieving in energy, proper maintenance scenarios, and preventive maintenance, it's important. It's how to manage our facility, security-wise, maintenance-wise, and so on. Previously, we had the gap where you have the interface of doing the procurement for the maintenance, but you don't know exactly how to maintain it, how to do a scenario for maintenance. Now, with every element right now in its 3D uh, environment, knowing exactly where it is, and those elements are smart, they interact, they behave, they know the relation between each other. So you know exactly how to plan out, how to create a scenario for maintenance. Again, we before, as I understand from the maintenance, we used to have the interfaces that manages the procurement for maintenance, the scheduling, for maintenance, but still, we don't have the actual link to the uh, maintained objects. We don't know exactly like this valve, 
when we have to change it. Yes, we have X number of valve. It become easier. You know exactly where is that element, how to maintain it. You have all the data related to that element stored into the element itself. You don't need to dig deep in different objects. It's the same object. You click on it, you understand when, how, what, where, all of these details interconnected to each other. So if you want to schedule uh, a shutdown for a service, you know exactly that area and that space which is linked to the model, linked to the element that will be affected with the maintenance. So you plan it, you schedule it, and you can visualize it easily where you know exactly where are the elements, how to access them, where, uh, what kind of, uh, uh, let's say, equipments that facilitates your maintenance, you can bring them to that area. All of this information also can be embedded. You can start collecting data about the behavior of your uh, facility. You can be collecting, start collecting data and performance analysis about the facility day by day, providing these smart sensors on these elements. And it can capture data every day and you can understand the behavior. Then you will see how is the drop, how much is the efficiency in the facility itself is dropping, and when do you have to start having, let's say, the maintenance. Even it's becoming more and more easier. All of this information are linked right now to your mobile. You can access this information from your mobile drive, mobile, uh, let's say, uh, phone, tablets. So you're exactly holding your mobile, walking in an asset, seeing, let's say, all the hidden in, uh, services over the full ceiling, and you know exactly how to access them, how to maintain them, how to plan for the services. So it's becoming easier and faster. See how much saving we are addressing by introducing this technology. Moving from the 2D world into the 3D world, it's saving a lot of efforts. Yes, we are addressing a saving and the design and construction, but maintenance and energy, it represents the most saving for the facility during its life. So everybody in, 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 in this region, even in the world, is hitting into this technology and it's improving very quickly. So I would urge like all the owners and operators right now to start thinking, working collaboratively where they're designers and contractors to achieve this saving, even including uh, asking our colleagues from the energy here at TACTA to be involved at the beginning. See how much saving we will be able to achieve if we are all working collaboratively to achieve a better world. Thank you. I hope it was quick and informative. Ladies and gentlemen, you have any questions for Mr. Ahmed? For facility management. So, uh, if we are talking about the, uh, the user for the PMI uh, uh, during the design, it should be a facility management uh, uh, specialist, right? Or consultant. Or the program itself, it's applied or sold with all of these uh, standards required uh, for the efficient use of the PMI, uh, PIM, sorry, and facility management. You want to complete the questions or shall I answer one by one? Um, actually, uh, I merged two questions in the same time uh, because this, the, uh, my last one is uh, about implementing, which I, I believe that uh, you just said or mentioned this in your uh, closing paragraph. Or closing statement that it's it's better to have uh, the PIM applied in the design stage, so to get benefit of uh, of this throughout the whole uh, life cycle of the uh, construction or, or uh, the asset itself or the development itself. Okay, so we'll, we'll head into the first question right now: is uh, how to address the facility management requirement during the early stage of PIM and how BIM that address that. Uh, we should not look at it as it's something completely different. It's about standardizing the information. Instead of you having a 2D element and you need to dig deep in drawings, now you have a 3D element. So those 3D elements, you can barcode them. There is an international standard that addresses, the, say, the facility management requirement by uh, providing a structured information and specific coding, which is called COBE. And from that, you can also generate something called asset information model. So at, uh, for every hotel owner or operator, or in general facility owner and operator, they have their own way of doing the facility management. 
So what we do here is that you provide the structured information within the element itself. So you have a parameters inside the element. So you need to understand that BIM, it's more about integrated elements. You have a model itself, it's fully coded, and it's ready to be integrated with any user interface to help you later to extract this information. How do you do that? Elements are coded. They have a specific code. That code can be from the standard code, international code, or you can, every owner operator, they have their own standards that you can embed it from the beginning or at the end. So you structure the information you want inside the elements, and you create the linking through the databases to your interface. So this information are easily to be transferred. Consider it as a simple database, but yeah, it's more visualized. Sorry, I know, but uh, I, I want to know. I want to know who's going to. Uh, uh, should he be a, a, a specialist for PEM specialist, so he can know all these requirements to use throughout from the okay. design stage till. Because but, uh, I, I know, I know it's it's a process. I know it's it's a process, but I I need to know if you are you you're, uh, you guys are doing it or providing it as a as a whole solution from the. Uh, uh, design or design stage till the facility management considering the whole process? Stop. There are two scenarios right now. Some of the consultants, and there are a lot here in UAE, they are well developed in providing, let's say, uh, a BIM uh, during the design stage where this information will be transferred to the construction. Right now, what happened? There are standards that govern the whole process. So, you have to we have to understand that at the design stage, there will be lack of certainty about certain information, about certain, let's say, uh, traits and disciplines. This information will be detailed more and will we have more certainty about them at the construction, where we have the, uh, let's say, specialized services, the, let's say, subcontractors, mainly for MEP. So this information we build on top of each other. So we don't need to have, yes, maybe five years ago where we don't have, when we don't have, let's say, all these experts that you need somebody to manage the process during its life cycle. But right now, we have a lot of professionals, and the standards are there on board. Now, the challenge which we have right now is the lack of understanding to the owner about the importance of this information to his facility. So the question is, does the owner need somebody professional to operate this? If he's going to, uh, let's say, uh, hire a facility management, or facility manager, the facility manager, they should have the ability to extract this information from them. Actually, today morning, we had this discussion. Now, we have submitted an as-built information for the whole asset. Now, we are expecting the owner or the facility manager to operate it. Are we expecting further design changes? No. Uh, my question is, is these sensors are already implemented here in GCC area or not? Thank you. I, I don't know exactly, but as I understand, I was discussing this with a specific facility manager and BIM services provider at the same, and we were exploring these. I've seen them. I've seen some of the projects in, in US and Europe, but in UAE, I didn't know. But I know that there is one project that is being done right now. Okay, they are implementing these sensors, and we are automatically getting this information directly from the sensors to the model, and we track the behavior of that element. It's, uh, and as I understand, these uh, sensors are becoming two, three dollars cost only. It's not expensive. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. I, I realize everyone's uh, quite hungry and ready for lunch. I, I, I just wanted to, uh, I, I wanted to get your opinion, sir. I, um, we, we are a technology hospitality uh, company uh, network in uh, lifestyle. And um, one of the complications that I, I personally feel is where do I draw the line between what is cool and what, you know, what, what does the consumer feel is, uh, uh, you know, is, is uh, fantastic and, and, and where does it all become too clumsy and messy? Example, uh, we, we have a development um, in uh, Thailand at the moment. And so we, you know, we've dug all the trenches and we've, we've done all the infrastructure where, where everything is, you know, uh, uh, is all sustainable and, it, and it, it returns back to energy. And you, you can 
uh, you know, get your own vegetables and all, all of those kind of cool things. But we also wanted to, uh, we wanted our guests to, when you check in, we wanted to load an app to your phone so that you can control your lighting and all of those kind of things. But there's, this, there's a huge amount of people that find that interesting. And there's also a huge amount of people that find that uh, a pain in the... Uh, in the backside. Uh, yes, I do agree with you. It's very interesting. And I would just say that they built the pyramids without uh, even a computer. I don't know if even there was drawing or not, but let's look at it this way. I think uh, it's the technology itself and our behavior against that that make it a, a, big, a bit of a monster to everybody. We create it as a business. I've seen it right now at the beginning. I was, when I was pricing these things, I was putting, let's say, 50, 60 million dirhams. So at that time, there was few people in, uh, in this technology. That there was a lot of tools available, lack of experts, and so on. And unfortunately, at that time, and still, we are running two parallel processes. And we are not achieving the proper saving. But if we do implement it, there is, uh, properly, we do achieve a big saving. The challenge right now, we are at the hinge. There is an old army that they are following the traditional methods, and there is the new millennials that they uh, want to use. My children, my children think what I'm doing is pretty cool. <laughs> but I have a very hard time convincing uh, uh, developers and uh, investors that this is the right way to go, because traditional things have uh, traditional values, right? Yeah, but we are looking at this as a complete change, which is not. We are not reinventing the wheel. We are just moving and we are automating. We are, unfortunately, we are cutting number of people. We are replacing quality of people. But we don't do this instantly. If we do this, we destroy the current industry. We, have, we are in a transition period. We have to take it smoothly. Yes, we will be losing, say, it would be an overhead for some time. But from the way which I'm seeing it, from the way which we are implementing it, honestly, it saves. It's not, it did not add a cost. But who exaggerates this is us, because we want to create a business out of it. But if we want to be frank with it, no, it doesn't. Thank you for your comment, sir. Thank Thanks. you.